Hello, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out the UK. First time visiting my channel? Welcome to subscribe, like and share. Um, basically, um, I was looking through the Nursing Times today and I thought to myself, what's in there? Is there anything interesting? Anyway, what popped up at me was a, a, an African woman on a big screen and it said she'd been dismissed for praying to a patient. So I started looking at it and I'm thinking, hmm, that's interesting. When you think that hospitals, they had their roots in Christianity. I mean, there was a point before the 1960s that they started their um, work shift with a prayer. But since then, pray praying in hospitals, in schools have been banned. Now, most black people, they're quite religious. And it must be very difficult for somebody who is religious, who sees somebody in a terminal condition, not to pray for them. The thing is, there's a difference in praying for somebody and imposing your religion on someone. And that's where I think Sarah Kute um, maybe overstepped the boundary. Apparently, the patient she did it to put that he was open-minded on the admission form. And he was, a, he was a terminal patient. I think he had bowel cancer or something. And she asked him if he had a Bible and he said no. So she gave him her Bible. And then he, she held his hand apparently and, you know, some of these people, you know, when you go into some of these black churches, they pray forever. And I think that must be what happened now because in this situation, because apparently the patient said she went on and on and on. And he felt as though he was in a Monty Python film. So what's happened now, instead of what could have been a little silent one minute prayer, which would not have drawn attention, she goes on, I don't know if she went into the spirit or whatever, but she went on and on and now she's lost her job. The thing is, is that, the sad thing is, is that she, she went on suspension for a while and they decided to take her back. And instead of her going back and thanking her lucky stars that they've given her a little reprieve, she goes in for an appeal and sends them to the tribunal for unfair dismissal. In the end, the tribunal sees her, her case as being um, upheld and she loses and loses her job. I mean, the thing is, is that it's fine to have faith. And sometimes people who have faith think that God can create miracles and he can. But God doesn't suffer fools gladly. If you follow the, they, they, or every hospital or every institution you, you go to or work in, they have policies and they tell you what is acceptable from what isn't acceptable. Now, in hospices, they have a chaplain that comes around and they ask, you know, the, normally um, the patient asks, but I think sometimes a chaplain can ask if they would like to say a prayer, which is totally different. And then they'll say a little quiet, um, silent prayer and that's it. But you can go overboard in some of these situations. And this is what happened from what I read in this particular situation. There was another woman, Carol Petrie. She was a white woman. And she did the same thing. But I think she actually, I don't know if she offered the prayer or she actually prayed. And she was suspended and she was reinstated. But there again, she didn't appeal. So, you know, she ended up getting her job. So you can look at it, this from all different perspectives. Yes, the church is rooted in Christianity. That's how it was made to, you know, it's based on Jesus and helping the needy, helping the sick. And then it got it got uh, into the West and expanded and stuff like that. We have Mary Seacole, the, one of the founders, and Florence Nightingale, and they looked after the sick. And it was based on prayer. They would pray, and they do believe sometimes that studies have shown that prayer and divine intervention or what they call distant, um, distant healing 
has brought results in some people. So it's not like it's totally, um, it to totally doesn't work. It depends on the individual and whether or not that person believes. Now, I don't believe you can go into a hospital and just pray for somebody who doesn't believe or, you know, force that religion because apparently she even said, you know, um, oh, let me, let me, let me read it. Okay, Sarah Kute, 50, lost her job at the hospital in Dartford, Kent in 2016 after her fitness to practice as a nurse was questioned for repeatedly talking to patients about her faith. Ms Kute allegedly told a bowel cancer patient in April 2016 the reason it's coming out now is because only, only recently she lost the appeal. So this has been going on for quite a while. Um, that if he prayed to God, he would have a better chance of survival. She also offered a Bible to a cancer patient and encouraged him to sing, The Lord is my shepherd. She recently lost her appeal at the tribunal court and has been dismissed. So uh, apparently she told him, the patient, that she would give him her Bible if he did not have one. She gripped his hand tightly and said a prayer that was very intense and went on and on, in quotes. And then she asked him to sing Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, after which he was so astounded, apparently, that he had to sing the first verse with her. Now, that part of me makes me think, you know, you're astounded and you sang the song. You wouldn't be astounded. If you're shocked, you'd keep quiet. If you're astounded, you'd be stumped and you wouldn't sing anything. So I don't, that part of it doesn't ring quite right. I think what might have happened, he might have did it to please her. He might have felt uncomfortable and sang it with her. Or he might have felt pressured and did it. But astounded, I think that's the wrong word. But who am I to judge? I, you know, I'm just reading what was written. Um, feedback via a patient survey seems to have prompted the investigation and the patient changed his original thoughts on the moment. Kute was originally, initially found to be in breach of nursing and midwifery council rules. However, when the NMC ruled that she was fit to return to work as a nurse, she launched a second appeal against the initial ruling of the employment tribunal. Bearing in mind that hospitals... Um, were inspired by Christ's example of serving and caring for the poor and inherited the duty to offer hospitality to any in need. Um, now Christianity has been banned in chapel and chapels have been replaced by multi-faith rooms in the hospitals. So there's no more chapels in the hospitals anymore. Um, what else is there? People's personal beliefs and their professional practice are often closely interrelated of all professions, nursing is one that is firmly rooted in the Christian tradition. Hospitals have their roots in Christian foundations, along with their founders, Mary Seacole and Florence Nightingale. Christian medical missions in Africa, Asia and elsewhere pioneered the practice of modern medicine and especially the training and the use of nurses in hospitals. It's ironic that, is it, that it is in Britain that a nurse is losing her job for praying for someone who is unwell. Especially when it seems that prayer at the beginning of work was routine for nurses in many British hospitals right up to the 1960s. And there were numerous prayers available for nurses to use. I think the thing here though is praying for someone is different. But I think forcing that person to engage in prayer when that person hasn't necessarily asked for it is totally different if somebody requests it. But from what I read, it appears that she was more or less implying that if he didn't pray, you know, he wouldn't survive and he needed God's intervention because he was dying. So I think that's where she crossed the line. Christian integrity demands that belief should not be imposed on anyone, but at the same time, spiritual care is central to people who are dying, even if patients decline to avail of it. Chaplains and other others are employed to deliver appropriate care to staff, relatives and patients. 
This is especially so in times of bereavement or of a local or national emergency, but it is not, of course, limited to such occasions. Political correctness is restricting even the role of chaplains and of volunteers who work with them. The chaplain may not be allowed to access religious data provided on a mission on confidentiality grounds. Patients may actively have to request the services of a chaplain or volunteer before they can have access to them. Why cannot consent for access by chaplains, for example, be taken at the time the information is provided? I think that is all. Christian Christianity is being pushed out. Nurses cannot pray. The creed cannot be recited at Christian services for fear of offending non-believers. Christian marriages, Christian marriage counsellors are removed because they believe in Christian marriage, and Christian adoption agencies cannot be publicly funded because they believe that children are best brought up in a family with a mother and father to look after them. Across the planet, people may pray for health and for relief of symptoms in signs of sickness, but it appears not so in hospitals anymore. Studies have shown that healing through prayer has been shown to result in psychological and biological changes that are potentially associated with improved health. Even having regard to the importance of the right to freedom of religion, it was plainly open to the Employment Tribunal to conclude that this dismissal had not been unfair. So your comments would be appreciated. Thank you. Bye-bye.